Hello spider friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, welcome. It's good to see you guys. It's been a minute since you've heard from Jess and I. Jess is behind the camera, by the way. It's been a minute since we've recorded any content for you guys. We've been on the road lately. We've been working on our new spider base. We've been trying to get that finished. We've taken on various different species. We're now working with certain reptiles, frogs, lizards, snakes. So we've been very busy, but Recently, we have been presented with a very unique opportunity and I wanted to take some time to share this with you guys. Jess and I have been talking and we want to start a project focused on Dayanopus. Well, formerly Dayanopus, now Asianopus, but commonly known as net casting spiders, ogre face spiders. I have one here with me. And this one is a very special animal to Jess and I. I'll talk about her in just a minute. But we have recently been presented with an opportunity to import several Dayanopus from Cameroon, which is the same species I have here. Now, it's no secret that the Dayanopus species is very special to Jess and I. So Jess and I, roughly in 2021, started working with imported net casting spiders, specifically from Cameroon. And we were actually very successful with breeding them and rearing the captive bred babies in captivity. And we even had a short period of time where we were able to offer captive bred offspring to you guys. But ever since we started working with this species, we'd get going and then we'd hit a roadblock where we would run out of either mature uh, males or mature females to breed together down the road. Just because these animals don't live very long, males mature quicker than females, they have a, a short lifespan, females live around two years, and males uh, slightly less. We've only been able to work with a small handful of animals that have come in. But recently, we have been presented with the opportunity to bring in a larger group of them from Cameroon. Now, normally we don't work with wild-caught animals, but we certainly don't offer wild caught animals but given the popularity in the United States with net casting spiders I mean guys we get inquiries definitely weekly sometimes every day asking us when we're gonna have net casting spiders back in stock however we've always run into this problem where we get mature females the females mature after we bred them in captivity so first generation captive bred animals and the problem always occurs, which is currently the problem, is we do not have mature males to breed them. In fact, at the time of recording this, there are no males in captivity to pair with this girl. This female might be one of two or three females actually still left in captivity. So when we were presented with the opportunity to bring more in and hang on to them and establish a colony, we jumped on it. So. We are super excited to announce the start of Project Safety Net. Obviously, the spiders cast their nets, but we want to really take the time and pour in all of our resources into establishing these guys in captivity. So we're able to bring in a large group, not a lot, but enough animals to diversify the project and hopefully get them sustained in captivity and we can work with several different generations. I have here, like I said, this female is very special to us. She is first generation captive bred. But if you'll notice in here, she's got egg sacs. And unfortunately, just like I was talking about earlier, these egg sacs are not fertile. They are phantom egg sacs. So phantom egg sacs are egg sacs that the female produces that are not fertile. So she has not been paired with a male. She's just going through the motions of laying eggs. And we're glad to see her do it. It's very healthy for them to do so. But again, they're not fertile, which is very sad. She's laid probably five or six egg sacs in here. And if only we had a mature male to pair her with, we would have probably hundreds of baby net casting spiders to offer. So we're always hitting this roadblock. Hopefully, she's still young enough to where some of the animals that we bring in, we might be able to mature a male and finally get her a mate. And then hopefully with some of the other animals coming in, we can pair them as well. Now, I want to make it very clear throughout this entire project that there will not be any wild caught animals for sale. All of the animals that we are bringing in, we are going to keep and use for breeding stock purposes only in hopes to give you guys captive bred healthy the Cameroon net casting spiders. So to break this down, we're gonna do this in two stages. The first stage, we are getting a small but diverse population of Dianopus in, different ages, different sexes to establish, and we'll see what we can do with that number. And hopefully in a couple months from now, we'll be able to bring in a larger batch of animals to integrate into our colony, and hopefully we can offset and get several generations of wild caught animals to breed to the first batch of animals that we brought in. So we're very excited. Hopefully this girl will find her a mate here really soon. The spiders actually get here in just a couple of short days. We have a lot of work to do ahead of us, but we're gonna document the whole process. So let's get started.
Okay guys, the first step in getting prepared for the arrival of the ogres is habitat preparation. So to do this, we just scoured our property. We found dried oak leaves with sticks attached to them. We found in the past, this works very well. Now the ogres aren't particularly difficult. Uh, they just need some roughage, some foliage to feel safe and some anchor points for their webs. And we found that this natural material is best. To get this ready for the enclosures, I would recommend that you bake them. Or in our case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put them in a black trash bag and we're gonna set them out on a hot car. The surface of our hot car in the summertime uh, gets roughly 175 degrees, which is perfect for uh, clearing off any hitchhikers. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get everything bagged up and we'll do some baking. So we're going to let these leaves bake on the hood of a car for a few hours, which should be more than enough time to sanitize them and make them safe for our spiders. So while we're waiting on those leaves to bake, we're going to do some enclosure modification. For half of the enclosures, we went with these cost-effective cereal containers. So to make them ready for our spiders, we're going to use a diamond hole saw bit and we're going to drill two holes for ventilation and fit them with two inch soffits. We're going to drill a hole in the top and then we're also going to drill one hole in the side. Now in our spider room, we have a lot of airflow, plenty of ventilation, so we want to find the right balance between keeping the enclosure humid but also sufficient airflow. Once everything is trimmed up, we're going to go ahead and fit the two inch soffit to one side of the enclosure and then on the top. And it looks just like so. These enclosures have an easy access door on the top, which will make feeding and misting easy. Once we have everything drilled, we're going to go ahead and get them finished with substrate and then we're going to take our dried leaves and we're going to start assembling the enclosures. Now we are expecting a certain amount of spiders, so we did have to do this many times, but you get the idea. The key here is to make sure we give them plenty of coverage, but also enough space to spin their nets. Now, in addition to the cereal containers, we're gonna use Exoterra front opening glass enclosures. We're doing this for a number of reasons, but most importantly, we wanna give you guys a clear view of some of the behaviors later on in the project. Plus, these are very aesthetically pleasing, and they give the animals enough space to not only spin their nets, but also make egg sacs. All right, everybody, it's a beautiful rainy day here at the spider base. And look what showed up. So the first batch of ogres are here. Let's go inside, let's get them unpacked, and let's see how they did. darling now these guys I'm not sure if they've just eaten meals or if they are gravid but we'll watch them very closely if they start making nets right away it's likely they're gravid we'll go ahead and set her up in <laughs> this one beautiful Get her set up in this one. Here you go, darling. Yeah. Okay. Here's a young female. There we go. See the size difference? So this is perfect. This is for the project exactly what we want. We want animals of various ages and sexes so that way we have a little bit of diversity. So she's much younger. We'll go ahead and set her up down here.
This next little ogre is a subadult male. Now notice right off the bat you see a size and shape difference of the abdomen. And if you'll also notice the pedipalps are swollen uh, compared to the female. This is the case for most true spiders despite not being mature just yet. They do possess larger pedipalps. All right, everybody, so that's gonna do it for the introduction of Project Safety Net. We've got everyone housed. We're gonna take some time to get everyone back on track and recover from the stress of shipping. Hopefully within the next couple of weeks, our second shipment will arrive, uh, but we'll keep you guys posted. We'll have new content dropping very soon for you guys. Like, share, follow, subscribe if you guys wanna follow along. And in the meantime, uh, we'll have updates for you guys very soon. So we'll talk soon. Bye.